in this section of um, material, we're going to be talking about negative exponents, and then a little bit later, we're going to be talking about scientific notation. Now, here I have listed out for you the rules for negative exponents. And if you'll look at this, this says a to the negative n power. So any number raised to a negative power is actually 1 over that number raised to the power. And then vice versa would also be true. If we have 1 over some number raised to a negative power, then that is truly the number raised to the power. Do you see that these are basically just reciprocals? If we were to put something over 1, anything we wanted to over 1, then do you see that this one is just the reciprocal of this one? We correct the negative exponents by doing the reciprocal. And something that you really have to understand is that a negative exponent has nothing to do with a negative number. The negative exponent is purely positional. It's just saying that it's in the wrong position. So in order to correct that, we would have to flip it over or do the reciprocal, and that will correct the exponent and make it now a positive rather than a negative. Okay, you can't forget any of your exponent rules, anything that we've learned so far, because we're going to be putting everything together as we go. So let's work some examples and see what happens here. In this very first example, 7 times x to the negative 3 power, can you see that the negative 3 is only affecting the x? If it were to reach out and touch the first thing it could, it would only touch the x. So this says that that negative exponent is only dealing with the x, not the 7 as well. So in order to correct that negative exponent, we would have to do the reciprocal, which would be 1 over x to the third power. Now, that is just this part. Then it still says that we're multiplying this times 7. So if I multiply that times 7, that looks something like this. And when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So if I put the 7 over 1, so we can see that that's a fraction, when we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, we have 7 over x cubed. That is our simplification there. For the next problem, we have p to the negative 5 over q to the negative 4. So right here, this negative exponent tells you that this is in the wrong position. It does not belong on top. We have to flip it over. Or, you know, um, instead of the numerator, it needs to be placed in the denominator. Now, likewise, this q is raised to a negative exponent also. That tells you that it's in the wrong position. We need to put it in the numerator rather than the denominator. So when we do this, when we drop the p down to the denominator, we will correct that negative exponent, and that will be p to the fifth power. In the denominator, when we move that q up to the top, we'll correct that negative exponent, and now that will be q to the fourth power. So that is as simplified as we can get. Okay, a couple more here really quickly. We have 3 to the negative 1 plus 2 to the negative 1. So here again, our negative exponents only on those numbers. So this tells us that this is in the wrong position. Rather than 3 over 1, we need to correct that by making it 1 third. Plus, and then the same thing here, this is telling us that that 2 is in the wrong position. It truly belongs in the denominator. We need to do the reciprocal. And now, in order to add these fractions, if you'll remember, we have to get a common denominator, which in this case would be a 6. And we'd have to multiply 3 times 2 to get 6. So we have to do the same thing to the top to maintain that balance. 2 times 3 would give us 6. So we do the same thing to the top. 3 times 1 is 3. And then we can add those fractions.